JJ, what kind of performance are you expecting from the kid, man? He seems like he's been coming on ever since the, the Illinois game. He's been constantly climbing. What kind of game are you expecting here from him in the first start in a playoff game from, from the young gunslinger? JJ, I'm expecting I'm expecting a, more of the same, you know. Uh, and what I mean by that is I expect him to, you know, hit his short routes, make plays out of the pocket when there's there, make plays with his legs, you know, scramble drill type of stuff. And also, I look for him them to have, have added a few more wrinkles since he's uh, since they've got these 15 practices. Yeah. For him to iron out stuff, you know, he didn't have spring ball because he uh, the shoulder. So this is the time where he he can hopefully iron out some of those kinks. Hardball, we know he's gonna be telling him don't 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 force it. You yeah. get out the pocket, do what you can, but don't force that ball like you did against Purdue. <laughs> but I expect JJ to be good because a dude like that, he, he seems to show up on the big stage. Yeah. Just the same with Donovan. Those dudes, those five stars. We ain't got many of them, but the ones we got, they they seem to show up and be those dudes. So I'm expecting him to continue that progression of I'm here now. This is one of those prove it games for me with JJ, right? Like we we've seen him obviously he had the the advantage against Ohio State. Purdue had a a slightly stouter defense, but not not anything that you were going to draw too many conclusions from. TCU is a defense with legitimate NFL defensive backs. Legitimately, right? We're not going to be, if we get big plays, it's probably not going to be because of busted coverages. If we get long touchdowns in this game, it's not going to be because it's not going to be because TCU necessarily made a mistake. We're going to have to win some plays here. So mm-hmm. in that regard, knowing that I'm expecting our leader, I'm expecting our our, our quarterback. To be leading the charge in that regard and, and to make some plus throws. That, that's what I'm expecting to see from him. And I think he can do it. He's shown us that he can do it. He just needs to continue to do it. He needs to continue to do it. Like you said, none of that silly stuff that we got in the second half of Purdue. We didn't we didn't need that throw. We didn't even need it. I didn't even want you to try it because we just didn't we didn't need to have it. So, you know, none of that. But I, I think some of that is also you take the good with the bad. Right? Because yeah. For every one of those plays, you got the play that he had in the first half to Ronnie Bell, where he, you know, scrambled out left, act like he was getting ready to run, got within an inch of the first uh, of the line of scrimmage, and end up tossing it to Ronnie Bell for 20 yards. So, for every one of those yeah. bonehead, come on, man, don't throw that type of plays. There's a nobody else could have made that play. So it's, yeah. it's a balance. It's, it's a balance. Yeah, it's a balance. It is as long as he's making a quick decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all about being decisive and making a quick decision. Like, don't be running towards the sideline and then hesitating. And you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Do should I run? Like, make the decision. Okay, I'm going to go get these three yards. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to run towards the line and I'm going to wait for him to get open, throw it. Make that decision. You second guess yourself. The defense catches up. You could have got five. Now you get nothing. Now you get one. You know what I'm saying? So just make the decision fast be decisive because you just don't have time to you know think back and forth when you're trying to the, the game just moves too fast for it you know what i'm saying yeah 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 and one more, one more thing with jj I, I, with with a game like this and they're and as good as their corners are i want to see how, how hardball plays this because Harbaugh will get – sometimes Harbaugh will get conservative and if 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 he sees we're going to get five, five, four and five yards consistently early, you might not see J.J. throw it that much. <laughs> He's about to run this. <laughs> He's about I to run this all night. We get anywhere near five yards of carry in the first half. 190 yards, three touchdowns for J.J. is probably what we should expect because – if that's the way you can win a playoff game, oh, Jim Harbaugh is going to do that. Jim Harbaugh is going to do that. Which, Joe Mora winning offensive line for the second year in a row. Why wouldn't you, right? Yeah, uh, I think also, that they get, let, let, them, let them eat. Let them go. Let them go. I think an X factor in this game is going to be C.J. Stokes. C.J. Stokes. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of save why for, for the end after we talk about the defense, but I think he's going to play a role 
and all of this that, that a lot of people aren't even really looking out for right now. So we'll, we'll, we'll hold the X factors for the end. With the, the defensive side, though, you're getting Mike Morris back. That's opt-out. a big tip. Yep, yep, no opt-outs. We got everybody healthy, it seems like. Keys to the defense. How do we stop them? How do we stop TCU? Stop TCU? This is uh, just like we stop anybody. You got to stop the run. Mm-hmm. The run comes first. Stop the run. Make them one-dimensional. Yeah, you'll put it in Duncan's hand, but it don't matter. The easiest thing to do is turn around and hand it off. So you have to stop the run just like we've done against pretty much everyone except maybe Illinois, Ohio State, shut them down second half. You know what I'm saying? So stop the run, make them one-dimensional. And we we run a lot of zones now, whether that's quarter, quarter, half, or something like that, cover two. You know what I'm saying? So with them, they're going to throw those underneath passes. But if you got two over the top or you're in a quarter, quarter, half, you can play underneath. You can play tight. You can play tight if you want to. So that's what that's what I would do. Make them drive the field. No no big bombs to uh, what's his name Johnson. Johnson, yeah, yeah, yeah. No bombs to him. Same as Marvin Harrison. Keep them safeties over the top. The one time you didn't, you got burnt. Remember that. So keep them over the top. Make them dink and dunk, and see if they can consistently move that ball. And then we'll get them in those third, those third and threes and third and fours, and then stop them. And now it's fourth and one, fourth and two. Go for it if you want to. Go yeah, for yeah. it if you want to. <laughs> but that's the difference, though, right? With the, with Michigan, Michigan has the ability to still play stout in their in their run defense with that run wall and have two safeties over the top as to not be be deep. That's the difference. Michigan doesn't have to, they're not going to be leveraged into playing a certain style of defense that fits you and what you want to do. That is exactly. that's the difference. So if they're able to do that, or if they're going to be able to do that, where it's going to start is stopping the run. Mozzie Smith, Mike Morris, Chris Jenkins, those boys up there in the box. That's where it's going to start. While I like TCU's running back, I feel like, well, we didn't even really see Mayan Williams. I, I, I honestly thought we were going to have a little bit more trouble with Mayan Williams in Ohio State's running game than uh, oh, yeah. I was, I was back. The two backs that I was scared of for the, was Mayan Williams and then the young cat from uh, Memphis, uh, Xavier Johnson, Hayden, Hayden or something. Hayden. Dallas, Hayden. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like I, I, was, I, 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 told, I thought they were going to be. They didn't even let him play. I thought they were going to get more burn out of Mayan Williams, but most of the backs this year that we faced outside of Chase Brown, who's a dog, you know, Chip Tradem got got some decent yardage in the first half, and then we shut him pretty much shut him down in the second half. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't see Miller being the one back that that forces Michigan to have to leverage their safeties into the running game. So that being said, even if he comes out, he had, let's say he has 50 yards in the first half, it's not enough for me to start bringing safeties down into the box. If you can do that, then, you know, your DJ Turners, your Will Johnsons, your G-Mon Greens, as long as y'all stay glued to those wide receivers on the outside, don't give up outside leverage, nothing deep, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to have middle help, presumably, there's no reason why Johnson should be getting outside of you deep down the sideline. Now, you take all that away, what are you left with? Max Duggan's legs. That is uh-huh. the biggest key to me. That's the biggest key to me is because we haven't tr- we haven't faced a true a, 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 a quarterback who can run that is willing to run on every play. Like the closest that we probably got to that was Tunga Vailoa. But he doesn't run on every he, – he, he's not a threat to run on every play. He's a threat to break out to keep the play alive and throw down field a lot of times. But he's not a he's not a, a read option quarterback. He's not somebody that you need to, you know, key on all like that for that type of scheme. Neither is, is Sean Clifford or, or DeVito in Illinois. They haven't faced a quarterback that's going to put them at a disadvantage numbers-wise on a play by play basis. That's what they got to got to got to figure out. Who would you choose to spy Max Duggan if that's the way that they go about it? I would say with speed, I would say Junior Colson, maybe Mike Barrett, 
Or, and this is what I'm hearing because I was doing some research on the practices. They say RJ Moore is practicing at, at, at linebacker. And I, I like that, honestly. That's if he's taking that would right be good. I, I like that idea, bringing him down. But see, now you got to play with three safeties. So you're probably I taking mean, the defensive just, lineman off the field. Uh, I don't know. I think they might just have him there because – They've been switching him. He's been he's been coming in, and Macari and uh, Moore have been back because he's been making bonehead mistakes. So he, RJ has been playing that middle kind of area a lot a lot this year. Okay. But uh, with with Max, this is my thing. If TCU shows if they show their hand with him early in the first half, say good night second half. Yeah. They show that hand of him running and him having to put him on his back early. It's like a nice second half because you show you show that poor hand. You know you what's coming. Kansas State blew you up. You thought Kansas State had you limping, walking funny, man. That because that's another. I don't think TCU has an offensive line that that's prepared for Mozzie in the middle, for Mike Morris coming off the edge, for Yabioki, Braden McGregor, who's been playing. Out of his mind the last two weeks, mm-hmm. Ray McGregor has taken a, a real step forward in in, in Mike Morris's absence. I, I, there's too much talent on the edge, I think, for TCU to hold up for four quarters. So you you combine that with the fact that they may have some trouble running the ball, may have some trouble, you know, consistently passing the ball. I would say this is this is also advantage Michigan in in the event in the defensive side because they're. There's no way to force Michigan to do something that they don't want to do. You flip that, the, the inverse of that with TCU, we can make TCU play a way that they don't want to play. They can't do that to us. Exactly. So I, I think as long as they keep Max Duggan in the pocket and they get to him, right, they hit him. Yeah, they just got to get him down. down really. When I was doing research for TCU, I was, who's the best defense they played that I could say is similar to us? It was Texas. Texas, yeah. Texas was, Texas was eating their offensive line up. I'm talking about blitzing, just mm-hmm. coming free. I was like, what the – how did they win this game? Mm-hmm. But Texas' offense couldn't do anything. But, yeah, they just were killing them. I'm like, okay, okay, I like this. I, I like what I'm what saying. I TCU fans would tell you, you know, that's why they feel confident about stopping our run games because they stopped B. John Robinson. B. John Robinson is a hell of a bat. He don't have he don't have the offensive line that we have in front of him. He ain't got Olu Oluwatimi. He doesn't have Zach Zinter and Trevor Keegan and and Ryan Hayes and them boys. He don't got them. So it's, I it's, hate it's when, a little bit of a different fit. That's one of my pet peeves when people talk about a running back and then forget to talk about the offensive line. If his offensive line is garbage, mm-hmm. unless he's Barry Sanders, maybe the best back in history, he, he ain't finna be eaten like that. Yeah. Like what Kenneth Walker showed some of some of that last year. Like you got to be a generational talent to have a horrible or mediocre offensive line and just and just go crazy like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Michigan's got Michigan and Georgia up for the Michigan won best offensive line and Georgia was right behind them. So, you know what I'm saying? Like. The proof is in the pudding, like bro. Like we, you've got the offensive line, and we got stud a stud back to go with it. That's yeah. match made in heaven. Good luck in the three three five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I honestly believe like the, the the advantage with Michigan's offense against TCU's defense is is obvious because of scheme. The, mm-hmm. the the advantage of Michigan's defense versus their offense, I think you have to dig a little deeper to find it, but it, it's it is there. Couple X factors. I guess I'll start with the X factors on defense. Will be pass rush. So whether that's Mike Ru- Mike Morris or Oki or Braden McGregor or even Jalen Harrell, who's, who's who's gotten some pressure here over the last couple of weeks, you got to pressure them early and often. Don't let this turn into a thing like C.J. Stroud, where we ended up letting him sit back there a couple of times for like ten seconds. He's not a lot of times he was sitting back there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, don't don't. He's not gonna sit there. He's not gonna sit there and stare at you in your face and, and not run. That's 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 the pass rushers one. I think getting turnovers on TCU is really gonna hurt them because their MO has been coming back in games late. Well, you turn the ball over against Michigan, you're gonna be down. Michigan is the mm-hmm. second half team. 
So that early bit of separation is going to play key to whoever gets it. If TCU is able to get early separation, that bodes well for them because they're a second-half team that, that gets better as they go on. So that, that, that should give them some cushion. If Michigan is out in front early, Michigan has trailed in, I think, half of their games going into halftime this year, but average about 21 points in the second half per. So you don't want to give Michigan any type of lead. You honestly don't even want them to be close to you at half. You want to have a, a, a bit of a cushion because you know that third and fourth quarter is going to be where they play their best. So turnovers will be turnovers, I guess, in, in time of possession. Uh, and then offensively, I mentioned earlier, C.J. Stokes. A lot of people have kind of written off C.J. Stokes um, because they seem to have gone to Khalil Mullins and, and, and Isaiah Gash and some other guys in Louis Hill. Earlier on in this season, C.J. Stokes looked like he was just going to be the next back in the line because he was doing everything that Blake was doing in his freshman year, that Donovan was doing in his freshman year. He was hitting the hole, getting good yardage, scoring touchdowns when they asked him to, right? He puts the ball on the ground, goes into the doghouse, which I knew he would because Mike Hart is his running backs coach. Mike Hart there and Freddie Jackson there. There wasn't no way he was about to get back on the field after that. They've had all this time off for bowl practice. C.J. Stokes was brought there to be the next running back. Mike Hart recruited him himself to be the next guy. I don't think Mike Hart is so ready to concede the fact that, oh, we have to go to a linebacker convert to get our third back and our and our, our spell back going into next year. Blake doesn't come back. You know what I mean? Like, C.J. was supposed to be that guy. I'm not just going to give up on him that quick. He had to go to the doghouse because he was putting the ball on the ground. But I don't think they've given up on him like they have Tavier Dunlap. Tavier Dunlap is probably never going to get another carry here. He literally yeah, only I don't comes know what in for protection. I don't think that's the case for C.J. Stokes. Yeah, uh, Stokes, they say – I was looking at something from bowl practice today. I believe that was today. Mm-hmm. But they say they say uh, Stokes is getting the, the backup carries and Mullins behind him. But Harbaugh tells him – because. The problem with Stokes, besides the 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 fumbling, the fumble he had or whatever, mm-hmm. is our 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 ba- our scheme is a patient scheme. So you can't just fly up to the line. That's yeah. that's that's yeah. he hit, he hits the hole too fast. And they were saying Harbaugh was telling him that in practice today. Like you're you're getting there too early. You're getting you're getting to the handoff too early. Like slow it down a little bit. So the hole can develop because if you get the handoff too fast, then you hit the hole. The hole hasn't developed yet. That's why you see Donovan and Blake get the handoff, take a little stutter step, and then boom, see you. Because the hole just parts like the red feet. I don't think he trusts his speed because he's not as fast as either one of those guys. And I think he's trying to get a head start. Right? Like he doesn't want to miss the hole. He doesn't want to you miss it. Be- he doesn't want the block to go by him, and now he got to cut back and do something else because he's not that fast. You got to play so within, you all gotta play within himself. Yeah. You just got to start. You know, he's he's young. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I don't see. He he definitely he definitely has the stuff that you want. Like to me, CJ Stokes is like a a grinded out. Like when when he reaches what he's gonna be, he's gonna be a grinded out. I'll say. At the top for college, Cadillac Williams. Okay. Where he grinding you out for 10, 15, mm-hmm. 25, 30, 10, 5, 10, 5. Like he ain't gonna go 60 very often, but he's gonna grind you down like, okay, we quit. The offensive line and this dude is getting five and ten and twelve in a pop. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like he's gonna be that type of dude. You know who he could be? He could end up being Avion Smith with a better offensive line. A guy who doesn't have blazing speed and he's not a huge running back, he's just a tough runner. And he can find the I, hole. I think better he'll be than better than him. Honestly, I think, think he'll be better, be better than him. Yeah. Maybe, maybe like a Karan Higdon type, something like that. I don't know if I see him being as good as Blake or Donovan because he doesn't have that breakaway speed. But I think he mm-hmm. can be a, a consistent back um, for us, a thousand yard back. He just gotta, he's gotta, like you said, be a little bit more patient, waiting for those blocks to develop. Well, for my X factor, um, I'm gonna go for my de- the the de- the defense. You know, I love defense. Yeah. 
Will Johnson is is he he he's he's yeah. starting now. Yeah, yeah. I man, man, I am so excited for next even next year because the potential of having Jair Hill on one side and Will Johnson on the other. And Mike Sanders still coming back to play the nickel. And yeah, he back. You got two exactly. six two six three corners on the outside that can run and can cover. And, and Rod yeah. Moore is only going to get better at safety. He gets he's gotten yeah. better every, every the last year. two years. Mm-hmm. So it's just hoping Macari or RJ or who's that Zeke Barry, one of the young dudes, maybe takes a big jump or something. Those guys, yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I see I see Will Johnson. What he did in that in that Big Ten championship. That's just that's 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 talent, and that's. That's work talent, work ethic, and film study and watching. Like I'm I'm watching what you're doing. I see your weakness. Yeah. You take the wrong step, I'm countering it. Like that's a tactician. Yeah. You so, can tell he watches was, a lot of film because he him and Rob Moore, because they're not they're not four sub four four guys. They ain't not four three, four two guys. But they seem to be right there as the ball is arriving so often. They have great anticipation. They have great footwork, and they know tendencies. That's a guy who yeah. watches a lot of film. Guy exactly. Of film. And so his technique is there. Is he doing that? That's impressive. Exactly. So you with him, with DJ Turner, like, it should be this. It should be ready to go and ready, ready for TCU and – you might see uh what's it, Johnson and Johnson going against Johnson uh Saturday. I think, probably I think that's what they should do. I think optimally you would like to have G Mon Green out there because he's a little taller. But I just don't trust that man playing the ball. You know, you know he can't be out there. <laughs> he, he gonna we do can't everything do except for play the ball. He's gonna jam off the line, he's gonna be in his back pedal, he's gonna turn and run, hips, all good, everything, perfect position. I'm not gonna touch that ball. I'm not gonna touch I've it. never seen honestly. I've never seen anybody p- cover someone as well as him and never find the ball. Like knock it down. three, knock it down. It, three years now, bro. You still haven't got it. Yeah, hey, I'd have him on the jug machine every day. Every day you gotta go hit the jug. You got to. It's gotta be. It's gotta be some type of mind block with him at this point. Like he's just so not so used to not looking in the game. That he's just scared to do it. Like now, like no, nah, I'm, I'm not gonna look. When I look, it's gonna go by. Cause that's what I used to think when I wasn't looking. Now if I look, it's gonna. When oh, I look, man. it's gonna go over my head. No. Nah. And then I learned. <laughs> no. Nah. It, it ain't gonna go over your head. Just look. Just look. Cause you know, you look and it'll be right here. You yeah. you just stick your hand out. Get a one handed pick. Like yeah, I'm spectacular. No, nah, you just looked. So you could actually make a play, you know what I'm saying? So this dude does everything well, but you you can't. It, to me, it's hard to put him on the field in 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 this type of situation because he's they gonna throw that deep ball if they see him. They gonna know his tendencies. You have I think everybody knows it by now. All our opponents. So if he's out there, they gonna they gonna throw that Barack up on him. Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. Give us a score prediction. What do you got? Final score. Uh, I've been I've been going back and forth with this because everybody's picking us to just kind of demolish them, but I I got I just kind of respect them, and we don't play uh, uh that type of style to do that. But I mean, it can get ugly if you you don't stop that run. So I'll say 34-24. That's that's pretty close to what I had. I had thirty eight twenty four pretty much. I, I I don't think that they'll blow them out. I don't think it'll be a blowout, but I think it'll be a handle a, a, a handle of enough win for for you to say, okay, they were clearly the better team. Mm-hmm. Right? It, it, you know, barring any craziness, I guess this is college football, um, Michigan should be able to control the game, control time of possession. No turnovers. They should get pretty close to their average offensively and hold, you know, OTCU to about a touchdown, maybe a little over a touchdown less than theirs. 
I got TCU yeah. 24, Michigan 38. Winning the Fiesta Bowl, heading to the Natty. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just waiting to see. Well, I mean, we gotta wait and see. But if 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 TCU, oh, this is what I'm just hoping they show that hand in that first half. Like this is basically all we've got. Like <laughs> this is all we got. Second half, you know, you know, it's coming. Like the mad um, scientist going to go the, in the locker room. You gotta do it one time on the show. You gotta do it one time. <laughs> do it. <laughs> You know he gonna go in that locker room second half. You get nothing. You get nothing. You get nothing <laughs> at all. Appreciate uh, you that. Get nothing, bro. All right, man. Well, once you stick around, because we got you know some more going on. Josh is gonna hop on with a special guest in the next segment. But let us know what you think about the Fiesta Bowl matchup with Michigan and TCU. Give us your official score predictions. In the comments below, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Come back next week for another episode of House Divided.